Good day to you humans. This is the story of the history of the world. It may sound incredible to you, but then isn't the world existence and everything incredible? An omnipotent God of infinite magnitude, both male and female, created the universe that we know, and our planet, and much more besides that most people have yet to realize. He created the first two human beings who were then 20 foot tall and they they were beautiful beings beautiful God made them so perfectly they admired themselves far too much but it was inevitable. They were the only two around, apart from all the animals and the trees and the plants. And because God had no body himself, they came to another inevitable conclusion that they were better than God. You know, God warned them about this, of course, but like most of us, they didn't really take heed. But that's the way it was. Now, they were in Africa, which is really the Garden of Eden, with all its splendour, probably by Lake Victoria, the heart of Africa. They were dark skinned, for because they were in the sun every day. Anyway, we know about this, don't we? We've got it in a book. And we also know that they had two children. Well, they had lots of children. But the first were Abel and Cain. And um, we all know what happened there, don't we, if we've read the first few pages in the Bible. Cain killed Abel, and then God said to him, You shall be a vagrant and a wanderer. And Cain complained, said, The animals, they'll just kill me. And he said, I'll give you a mark, a mark, so that any who meet you shall know. If they kill Cain, they'll be avenged sevenfold. And that mark that only God could give changed the colour of his eyes to green. And Cain's descendants would also have this mark. Who else could do this but God? And people started to notice when they came in contact with Cain. Because Adam and Eve, the first two humans, were having many more children. Abel wasn't, of course, poor fellow. He was the first to enter the spirit world. Yes. The place we go to when we dream. Anyway. Cain was there. And as Adam and Eve had more children, Cain obviously had a mate. And he had children. And then Adam and Eve's children had children. And within a few hundred years, there were quite a few people about. Because they lived some 900 years. Anyway, people started to notice when Cain was around things kind of cooked up a bit. Do anything to Cain, 
and you get some serious karma. Do something nice to gain, and you get some good serious karma. Yeah, this made Cain feel quite important now, and thinking perhaps this wasn't as bad as I thought. But he was still plagued with the fact that he couldn't grow anything out of the ground. So he made a city, and people grew for him. And the other children of Adam and Eve, who had brown eyes, were starting to think, this is a bit unfair. And Enoch walked with God for 300 years talking about it. And eventually went back. Well, before he went back, somebody else did something bad. One of Cain's descendants, Lamech, took for himself two wives took two wives. Now, they knew back in those days that everybody had a mate, a destined mate. There was someone that fitted you perfectly. Perfectly. Way better than anyone else. If you're struggling to believe this, <clears throat> let me just remind you, God made humans in God's image. Now God is an all-feeling soul. The animals don't have souls, but humans do. Yes, that's the bit which lasts forever. And as God in God's image is a male part and a female part of his soul. <clears throat> so we all have a male and female part. <clears throat> Unless you're in the 15% which are same sex. Anyway, so your mate is out there. And this guy called Lamech, he took himself too. Now that's naughty, isn't it? Taking somebody else's mate. So God punished him. But he's not really punishing him, he's sort of and he's not even punishing the whole world, he's, he's just teaching us. And these little tweaks he's making isn't really a punishment, it's a catalyst. A catalyst to make the whole process go a little bit quicker, which I think most of us appreciate. Anyway, Lamech, Lamech was given blue eyes and all his descendants would have blue eyes. And anyone who kills Lamech is avenged 77 fold. Now this was getting serious. And people didn't particularly want to serve Lamech. So they kind of banished him to the north. The blue eyes were sent to the north. Now if you're starting to wonder if I'm making all this up, well, I kind of am. But you'll see that this incredible story eventually becomes the only possible truth. Now those with, um, <clears throat> without any mark, in particular in the line of Seth and I mention again Enoch gave birth to a son at the age of 65 then walked with God for 300 years and God took him back he didn't die now at this stage this is, this is about roughly six or seven hundred years in the only person who's died is Abel so Enoch goes to join Abel in the spirit world. Adam and Eve, they're still alive. Or perhaps their names were Aman and Ammon, but their real names weren't used in the Bible. Anyhow, 
No one's died yet. Apart from who's being killed. So they don't know they're going to die, but maybe they're starting to notice, I'm getting a bit old, I'm getting a bit creaky. Probably inevitably I'm going to die. Hey, what did Enoch talk about with God? Hey, I don't know, but it's something to do with this unfairness of the line. They were not happy about it. They saw this green-eyed and the blue-eyed as being sort of superior to them, which isn't true. Because remember, they're cursed. And if the green eyes are cursed in the sense that they cannot profit from the wealth of the earth, i.e. they're not going to be successful in planting crops and such, what sort of curse do you think the blue eyes have got? Well, you'll have to ask a blue-eyed person that. But perhaps they get um, plagued by insects, you know. Perhaps flies annoy them or something like that. I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, so you have these three class of people and you have a line of brown eyes in Seth who aren't completely happy about this. And they go and do a really bad thing. Yeah. By the time we get to Noah... Noah's been convinced by his father, who was convinced by his father, to cause this third sin and get the avenge fold of 777. Well, it never works, but he tells a big fat lie and hides the truth from people for ever since then. And people did degrade at this point. This is probably why Enoch went back with God. People degraded to such a point they were really bad but the earth was still giving its wealth and they were probably having a very good time but just not being particularly good <laughs> anyway so you've got Cain in the Middle East Lamech gets sent to the north because no one can stand to be around them they don't want to serve them and they don't want their karma either so they get pushed off to the north and then you've got everybody else in Africa and Noah does this crazy lie and hides the truth and after that just goes down, 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 downhill until most of this is forgotten about. Then comes along Jesus. That's quite a jump, isn't it? But we're going to do the jump. Okay, I'll just quickly mention that in in Noah's line, they're trying to get this curse to be seven 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 fold, and who knows what color eyes they might have got? You know, red or purple, pink. I don't know, something like that. But it didn't happen, did it? Because God didn't deem it right. But anyway. Noah's line ends up being the pharaohs of Egypt and Noah caused his own line to become divided with the blessed that was Shem the cursed which was Ham and those who dwell in the tents of the blessed Japheth so that whole crazy stuff went on all Egypt and you know about that. And I don't. So I'm going to carry on with the story. Then God sent Jesus. And Jesus was like one of the first really good people. I mean, I know you had prophets and things like that. But there were probably moments of clarity for them that they would see something and then they would tell everybody else even though everybody else was in wickedness and perhaps the prophets were too slightly or a bit you know but anyway here comes Jesus and God tweaks Jesus and Jesus is just like us but God had decided that this man was going to be the man that was going to start pulling things back together 
yeah, I guess it must have been a joint choice with God and Jesus. But anyway, this will happen. It's amazing. It's incredible. <laughs> right? So you've got um, Jesus, and he is. Um, I'm not sure whether he's a, in the line of Cain, Lamech, or or uh, Seth. We'll call it like that. Seth being the brown eyes, Lamech the blue, and Cain the green. <clears throat> I mean, yes, oh yes, sorry, I did forget one important thing. Because of all this nonsense of Noah trying to get cursed, so you're going to have pink eyes, um, God made it, a, a, the, gave people the ability to change the colour of their eyes if they really, 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 <clears throat> really wanted to. Um, and it is still possible today. But I'm not going to go into how and why because I don't really know. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, so Jesus comes along. In his tweet, he is like with God. No one since Adam and Eve, Ammon and Amman, have been this at one with God. He is awesome. People can feel the love radiating off him. He heals the sick and the lame and cures the blind. He does all these wonderful things. And he talks to people. He tells people how they should be living if they want to be happy. Because this is all God's design, right? We all have to learn the mistakes. We have to learn from our mistakes. So Jesus is the way. And, um, you know what happened to those of Lamech? They were sent up north, right? Their skin turned white. Because they'd been up north. And Cain's number became few. Because people were able to change the colour of their eyes. So many of them went brown eyed. Or they were a bit of both. A bit of green, a bit of brown. And one year off. One year on. One year where they would grow food. One year where they wouldn't. But they'd get all the... Um, the power of the karma. But those blue eyes in the north, they weren't going to stay there forever, were they? And after Jesus died, well, it's what came out the closet. Or what was already coming out the closet. Because yeah? there must have been some blue eyes among the Romans, those white skins. The reason they had white skins is because they'd been banished up to the north. <laughs> you know, we don't want you around, you're too dangerous. But their numbers had swelled. And now they came back. And of course, in war, anyone kills a blue eyed, gets avenged 77 fold. Gives them. An extraordinary advantage, doesn't it not? And if we look at the way history has turned out, doesn't it make sense? The world is filling up with the line of Lamech. This was, of course, Noah in the spirit world, trying to tell Abraham that his seed would number the earth. His seed, he wanted Abraham to kill his son Isaac to get these pink eyes. He was planning it. But it didn't work out. Because it's not God's plan. God's plan is working out. And yes, it's God's plan that there be these blue eyed people, but it wasn't necessarily God's plan that we wouldn't know the truth. But maybe it was, because it'd be an insult to God to say that things had turned out any different to the way he thought they would, in a sense, wouldn't it? Or maybe not. Maybe it's just too complicated. Well, 
who knows but uh, what we do know is that we are here today Christmas 2014 and the world is certainly interesting anyone who hurts a blue eyed person gets avenged 77 fold gives you a motivation to love them doesn't it it's hard to love them especially as any blue eyed person their whole life has kind of felt this effect power is quite a corruptible force but we should all follow Jesus' way and then it wouldn't be a problem so we come to today the blue eyes are growing they need to use fertilizer to grow their crops they need to use pesticides to kill the insects they have no choice but it's not good imagine if we did have a massive war with the brown eyes they could end up getting wiped out if they attacked the blue eyes because of the avengement rule it wouldn't be under their control and then no food would grow without pesticides or fertilizers why are there so few green-eyed people left actually they're not that few but most of them have got a brown eyes with a bit of green in hmm? we need the green-eyeds to drag the blue-eyeds back to green-eyeds because in a sense only a green-eyed person can can kind of take a blue-eyed person to green and then once you're green all the brown-eyed people can help the green-eyed people become brown but first of all we need to make all the blue-eyed people become green <laughs> this has been the history of the world Maybe I made it all up, but my gosh, it sounds very plausible to me. Anyone else come up with a better story for how we got to where we are today? I'd like to listen to it. Thank you. Goodbye.